Hey guys, it's Jan Jessica, and I had a Sunday conversation today with a person named Slouch47. I will put some of his content here just so you guys can see um, who I was talking with. He's a young upcoming uh, artist, musician who does hip hop, and he's a Christian conservative. And he's really, I think, fighting the good fight on in his platform, in his genre of, you know, trying to make rap music not about the gang life and the drugs and things like that. So I think he's a really positive influence in the rap community. Or I will put his Instagram link in this description. Of the video. This um, rapper is mixing many different sounds with hip hop. I'm talking about Slouch, an independent artist from Queens, New York, who is a member of a rising collective known as 47. Slouch has been putting out music consistently since 2018. And after comparing some of his earlier music to now, you can tell that Slouch has been putting in work to refine his craft and sound. But let me know what you think. Here's a snippet to a song called Slice Em and Dice Em off of his latest project called No Time. Let's run it. Yeah, you hear that sound from the underground to the bleach. Wait. Big dog in the pound and I'm hunting out for some leash. Wait, wait. Yeah, and I ain't got no reason wait. Only for my squad, my sis, my mama Sons, no demon slice And dice, man, chop and drop I can tell just by your feelings You really don't want me for spice And tights to catch me admiring your virus I can just give me some guidance But I'll be gone for the nightlands Yes, maybe it is a little bit of an echo chamber. There were comments coming through in the video. I don't know if I can get them to play during this recording that we did. Um, it was actually Instagram Live. So there were comments and we tried to address as many as we could. There was a few people who disputed what I had to say and were not appreciative of that. And I think that's okay. I, I You guys know me. I encourage the opposite of what I am, what I want. I want to debate the people who don't agree with me. Like that's my number one goal in life is to change some minds and change some opinions about the trans community and or why trans shouldn't be competing in sports. Like that's what I live for. So it was nice and I want to share this with you now. And here's the video that we did together today. Sorry, uh, Jessica was on her computer. There we go. How are we, Jessica? Hey, how's it going? Doing well, doing well. I'm happy that we're having this conversation. This is something that you know, we spoke about a little bit in the past, a couple of weeks ago, I wanted to discuss a couple of things with you, but I wanted to give you the floor a little bit for the people that don't know you. Um, a lot of my fans and followers know that I talk about, you know, things that aren't really talked about, a lot of controversial topics. So I wanted to give this opportunity to you to explain yourself and what you believe and what you try and do with your social media platform and what message you're trying to spread. So I just want to give a huge thank you to everyone that's in the live that's willing to hear a conversation. Like I said, this is just a conversation between two people and we're trying to get a better understanding of our points as well as your points that are in the live. So feel free to leave whatever you want in the comments and we're gonna try and answer it to the best of our ability. But uh, Jessica, you're more than welcome to introduce yourself. Okay, thanks. Yeah, um, I am 49 years old and I have been transitioning a better part of almost eight years now. Um, I knew this goes against my narrative of don't transition children, but you know, there are some trans kids out there. I know there are. It's just hard to, there's no way to go inside of a mind and say, for sure, this person will definitely be better off as a transgender person. Um, and a lot of it is, I knew when I was a kid, my mom knew. She just never said anything. And I grew up in the 80s, 90s, where we didn't even have cell phones. There was no internet. There was no such thing as the internet. You know, we had phone books. And so I wasn't provided the information that today's generation has. Um, I guess my is my excuse, but there there is a whole generation of what we call late transitioners, people like me, that I think we have our heads screwed on correctly, and it's the new generation that's really bothering me right now, and and they, they get after me, you know, saying that I should have never transitioned, I'm old school, and call me a fetish person or whatever, and you know, I I, I it's not true. I'm real. I'm legit. But I'm not, I don't have the sensitive feelings that all these, the young generation has. So not to bag on your generation. I know you're probably a little younger than me, but um, I just, you know, the big thing for me is sports. I, I'm protecting women's sports as best I can. With the platforms that I have, it's just, it's hard um, mm -hmm. to, to get it out there and spread the word. And the, the, the newest generation of trans coming up now is, is making life really difficult for, for the gatekeepers like me, you know? Yeah, so yeah, Of course. I understand what you mean fully. Um, to elaborate on what you just said about the new age of the LGBTQ community, like today's version of it, I believe personally that the government is implementing an extremist version of the LGBTQ community and pushing 
extremist rhetoric through like the schooling system or big companies, you know, advocating for say puberty blockers and stuff like that to young children who may not fully understand who they are yet. I feel like they're trying to push that so like regular everyday straight people who aren't really open minded are just going to ultimately start hating the LGBTQ community as a whole because they see all this craziness going on and there's never really a full conversation. It's like a pendulum swing. So what could you say would be your opinion on the schooling system or what's going on in schools per se when it comes to LGBTQ rhetoric? Oh yeah, the school thing. Um, I touched a little bit about that on on the LG or on the Jubilee uh, debate that I did, and we didn't get too deep into the school thing. But yeah, the the curriculum. I, I even said this on the podcast too. Is the curriculum should be math, reading, writing, science, a little bit of history, probably in my opinion. But um, sex education shouldn't come in well till you know 10, 11 years old, and there should be no talk of LGBTQ. IA plus anything, in my opinion, um, you know, below the junior high level, like they don't need to worry about that. They need to worry on being good human beings, um, educated and able to attain a job and mend with society and contribute to the world, in my opinion. That's that's what's important. Social skills, math, reading, writing, like, like the, the educated basics. And there's no room, there's no need for LGBT education in the younger grades it's just it's blows my mind that that's that's a thing mm -hmm. and i know because of the dei that the government wants that's diversity equity inclusion or the esg scores um that's what they're pushing and you know uh if you want me to go on i can one more point on that like i've written letters to to colleges i've written letters to my congress since you brought con you know government into this my congress representatives all three of them are female and when i write them letters to block bills or pass bills to protect women and keep the transgender ideology away from the kids um their response is no uh we want the trans ideology presented to these young kids because it's going to hurt everyone that's their excuse is they say if we keep this away from one group we're hurting all of the groups and it's like that's not true but that's their excuse and i don't know why the government feels they have to do that i i me personally, I believe, like I said, I go crazy on my stories, and that was perfectly explained. I, I appreciate you giving me your, your take. And then I also want you to answer the comment that I have pinned. It's the first comment that we have. But just to finish um, that point, yeah, exactly. It's, I feel like not only is there a de uh, demasculization of men, um, I also feel like the, the, the gender role thing is confusing to a lot of children who are already going through a hard time at home that are already confused about so many other aspects in life. I feel like gender should be something that a child thinks of when all the other, not all the other things in their life are okay, but when they're at an age where they're not going to be making life-changing decisions, when the hot, when you know, the the health organizations all around the world are just allowing children to transition, you know, and not really going into depth of what things could possibly happen. So I actually wrote down a couple of things yeah. from the Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh. It says, by taking these medications, we may be helping to avoid the unhappiness and trauma of an unwanted puberty. Now, the way that written out is a little confusing to me because I don't know a single child who would be, who would experience or like know about like trauma or like not want puberty. Like I've never heard of child like, no, I don't want puberty. So like that word is just like very confusing and to me personally, you know, and I, I don't really fully understand that. I feel like everybody going through puberty doesn't want to go through it. You know, like I, when I was going through puberty, I hated it, it sucked, you know? And then, you know, I have a younger sibling, I have a younger sibling and I also coach youth basketball and I see, you know, kids are depressed, they're confused, they don't know what to do with their life, you know, they're confused in so many different aspects. So I think implementing gender just will completely changes the whole trajectory of who they're gonna be as people, because now you're just confusing them with more and more, just, you know, you know, it's just confusion. And so just to um, answer the uh, the comment that I pinned for you. So, so true, so important to let trans women play sports to protect women's sports. So what is your opinion on that? Cause that's something that you kind of focus on. Yeah, yeah um, I, I I could actually talk about what you just talked about on the unwanted puberty thing. Do you want to go back to that or do this this question right here? Sure. If you, if you want to uh, respond okay. to yeah, what I said. Okay. So it's it's so true to it's so so true so important to let trans women play sports to protect women's sports. Um, that's I don't maybe I'm reading that that statement wrong, but it's contradictory in the way that yes, this person probably wants trans inclusion in sports, but they need to protect women's sports at the same time. So the only answer to that is the third category, which we've tried that in several like world aquatics the swimming is the swimming organization um uci cycling has done it they've, they've banned the trans inclusion from women and women's division so now they opened a, an open category third category they call called open and it's for trans male or female whoever wants to sign up to sign up 
Not one trans athlete has signed up for any event since the all, all the rules have been changed. So it shows like this, this, this pin topic is, yes, it's important to allow trans people to play sports, but at the same time, we need to protect the women and let them have their own division. And that that's, you know, the, the government funds these schools and says, okay, you need 500 uh, athletes to get this million dollars from the government this, this year. So they're like, oh, well, if we disclude, if we un, you know, if we block the trans athletes, they're not going to play at all. And we're only going to have 490 athletes. So we're not going to get our million dollars. They said, well, let's just let all the trans athletes play so we can get our million bucks. That's what the colleges want. So the colleges are encouraging trans inclusion to get the government money. So it's frustrating. I understand completely. I, there was this one story that I heard of uh, this um, trans, uh, this man who transitioned into woman, into female, and she was fighting uh, mixed martial arts. And these fights were brutal. Yeah, like, that's, that's there, needs to be, there needs to be an understanding that, listen, like male physical dominance and women physical dominance are two completely different things. Men are able to do things physically that women can't in certain instances. Like, for instance, childbirth, men can't physically do. That is the, the power and that is the beauty that women are able to do. And then after giving birth to such child, then be able to feed the child from her own body. You know, that's a beautiful blessing. But for men, it's a little bit on the strength side physically. So when I see a transgender um, MMA fighter fighting a girl and three fights in a row, women's skulls have been broken in. In an, uh, not even a contest. It's just a complete, it's like a complete obliteration. Like there has to be a line that has to be drawn, and we can't hold people's emotions accountable to to the truth or the the realities of life. You, you understand what I mean? I understand. Um, two two points on that one. I assume you're talking about Fallon Fox. She's the one. There's two MMA fighters so far that have done this. Fallon Fox and Alana McLaughlin are the two. But yeah, the Fallon Fox issue. I mean, so the two points that I have to make is contact sport should be off limits period one and two the it's hard to say that there should ever be inclusion now you know so they pushed and i said this in other videos they pushed too hard now when i say they i mean this the young generation of trans or and the government with the inclusion thing they pushed too hard too fast too quickly and society was like whoa what the hell are we doing like why all of a sudden is this just okay and it's not okay obviously but had they allowed the younger trans group to transition on the opposite sex hormones, those trans athletes, to, as they get older, would be more equal to a woman. So they could sign up as like in co-ed leagues or open divisions or maybe even in a women's division in a non-contact sport. And nobody would be any at any disadvantage because I'll be honest with you, you know, a child on HRT throughout is going to end up pretty dang close to the gender they wanted. You know, like the drugs I take, the hormones that I take, they weaken me a lot. Um, not enough to, to level the playing field, but they do weaken me. A lot of that is because I went through male puberty and being a bi biological man, um, I, I have that muscle structure. I have that bone density. I have that heart, that the lung capacity. I have all that stuff of an athlete and it doesn't hurt that I was, I've been an athlete all my life, all through high school, I was in sports. And, you know, I, at one point I did become a professional athlete. I was paid to do a sport. So I would train nonstop. And there's no amount of drugs I can pump into my body that will take away all of that muscles that I've gained over the years. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, the that's a touchy subject because we don't want to start these kids transitioning at, at 12 before puberty because it's harmful to your body. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, had they not pushed so hard, there might have been a chance to allow it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That, that was beautifully put. I wanted to respond to this. I'm just still confused on how you, as a trans person, don't want your own group of people to be represented equally. I don't think that that's the case. I don't mean to speak for you, Jessica, right now, but from what, you've, from what you've explained to me already, is that you see that there could be a disadvantage in women's sports when men who transition into female. You see the, the effects of what happens with that. But you do call for a league for transgender people to attend, but the problem is transgender people won't go to these leagues. Is that that was the point that you made a couple minutes ago, right? Exactly. So, yeah. So the inclusion just, is there, and the opportunity for there to be inclusion is open. So why don't we let women play in men's? And why don't we let let women play in the NBA? Because the same rules could apply. You know, there's a whole league for women in every in all the sports in the world, and there's a league for men in all sports in the world. So if there was a league for transgender people, which there has been tries to already have accomplished. But transgender people aren't making the move to go to the league. For what reason 
I can't say 100% sure, but you know, that's just the reality of the case. So there is an inclusion war going on with the trans community, but nobody's doing the right thing. No one's making the call, and, you know, keeping it equal, but divided, you know, like equal to men, women, and transgender people, but in their own respective categories, as it should be. Yeah. Um, I just saw a comment that said Big Pharma pushing this, and the answer is yes. They, When I transition, I would not saying transition, but when I transition, I am a lifelong customer of Big Pharma. I'm a lifelong customer of the surgical industry. Um, I've had many surgeries. I will, I'm on hormones, which I have to pay for every six months out of pocket. So yes, it is a big time push by Pharma. But to answer that person's question, um, I think it was motion something. Uh, how can I be a trans person and want to exclude my own community? Well, the, the problem with that is that there's a delusion in the new LGBT, or I guess I should just say the T, that they are physically and biologically women because they think they are. Like, I am a biological man, that is it. You know, I present to the public this way I, because this is what makes me feel good inside. This helps my mind be at ease with who I am. I would wake up every day literally hating myself. Like, can't stand to look at myself in the mirror. And this helps me navigate through my life in society, in the public eye, every day I go to work and I'm happy. Like, I want for nothing now. Like, I want for nothing, literally. But not to get off topic on what he said, it's, yeah, but there's going to be some gatekeeping on my end. And, you know, if it means protecting women, I, I'll gatekeep all day. And here you go. He asks again, do any of you understand how hard it is to get prescribed? It's actually not, not that hard to yeah, get that, prescribed. I was going to say the same thing. Yeah, it's yeah. really not hard. Uh, I, I, I witness accounts of, of stories people have told me, like, personally. So you can yeah. explain it, though. I want to give you the floor as much as you want. Oh, no, it's a, I'd like to talk to both um, equally. But yeah, to answer that question, it's not hard. Somebody, people are saying, yes, it is. No, it's not. Um, it's not hard. You, you can walk into a Planned Parenthood and get assigned hormones that very day. Like that day, you can walk out of the, the, the Planned Parenthood or your doctor's office even. You can go straight to the pharmacy and pick up your prescription of HRT. Um, like I can, I, I, I shouldn't say this out loud, but I can give you a plastic surgeon tomorrow who will operate on a 15-year-old because I've been in this community for so long. I have connections. Like, yeah, of course, like I'm trans. I've been doing this all my life. Like I know people and it can be done regardless of what state you live in. And if there's no laws, it can still be done. There's proof. Like you just might, might've mentioned that there's recorded secret video of, you know, people at these doctor's offices going, Oh, we know how to work our way around the system. Yeah. You know, it, it is craziness. Um, craziness. It's complete lunacy. Um, One thing. I, I think this person directing motion is a troll because they're saying also my pronouns are they that. No, so no, they I, no, not a troll. De definitely not a troll. I can guarantee okay. you it's not a troll. Someone that I am, someone that I'm friends with, someone that we've had discussions in the past about this, okay. who is very passionate about how they feel. It's just, I, there is a miscommunication going on with the understanding part. And I, I'm not going to lie, you know, they're directing motion, amazing, amazing videographer, amazing photographer, um, works close with my videographer, Will Ryan Media. Um, you know, I, they, they identify as they them so i just wanted not a troll you know okay, just, about the way that you the way the way that they feel so yeah i'm sorry i i see that everybody's like not a troll but i think i thought it was because people know me on twitter and instagram they know i hate the they them mm -hmm. like can you explain why just uh, uh, uh just explain why your opinions on like the whole um identifying the gender thing well the pronoun thing or the gender identity thing um there's two different i suppose but like i just I'm I'm not a grammar elitist, but and I'm not a grammar snob. But I mean, there is there is, a, like, are we really going to go down that road of changing the actual? A they is a plural person, is a, is a group. Uh, them is 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 a group, and that's not a singular pronoun. I don't. That, I was told that language changes, and back in the back then, um, they like it used to be referred to like they sometimes, you know, like in ancient, like not ancient, but in older times, like they used to mean plural, but. The way that the world looks at they, them now, in my opinion, I feel like it's used in a plural way, you know, and I, more than more recently than longer, like the definition kind of is just, it could be whatever it wants now. So I'm a little confused on the topic. I, you know, I don't want to say that I'm fully against, I'm fully support because I still am just a little confused on the whole thing in, in itself. And that's why, you know, I want conversations like this because I also want to be informed more on the topic. Yeah, it's, I mean, okay, so let's go real world scenario. I go to a bank where, where I bank, there is a non-binary person who works there and it was a struggle for me. Someone who's actually trans in the community and for me to, I wanted to make this person stay once, right? And I had to sit back and think for a couple seconds how I could phrase this sentence to make 
me call that person they and in a sentence and it was it's it's mind olympics that you play with yourself to try and coach yourself not, not to call that person a he or a she as you see them with your own two eyes so for me to address them as they when i was talking about them to another person it was a lot of work you know and why why should we force society to you know go through that trouble to to not misgender someone or call someone a they when it's really hard like maybe two generations from now 20 years um this will be a non-issue but i right now today's times the societies they're not ready for this you know it's just not the pronoun thing like i i, I drive uber every you know i drive uber in las vegas mm -hmm. every day I, I get called dude sir bro man and, and yes sometimes people get in my car and they're like oh thanks ma'am and oh she said we're going to this place you know i get misgendered but i also get you know the the female pronouns and, and that's great and when people say her or she or ma'am i i turn around and say thank you mm -hmm. and when they say man or bro i just I, I ignore it but i don't call them out on it there are some situations where if they keep pushing like yeah bro yeah dude yeah bro, you'll say like, something of course yeah. yeah and i'll turn on i go you can just call me jessica and here's my driver's license it's my legal name you know mm -hmm. and then oh so and i'm like yeah yeah exactly i don't think if someone were to tell you oh well my pronouns are they them and they said it respectfully and you went about saying it, they then maybe you accidentally slip up here and there, but you don't mean it intentionally. I feel like that's also in inclusion as well. Like, I, I believe personally that if someone does identify as something, then I will give them the respect. If they want to be called whatever they want to be, then I will give them the respect and call them that because, you know, that's how they want to be identified as, as a person, right? But I don't think it should be a something where now I have to fully believe that what you think is true, you know, but I will respect your opinions. Like, for example, I, I am a Catholic, right? So I live amongst Hindus, Buddhists, Muslims, Jewish people, you know, but I don't hate them. You know, we are all human beings. We live on the same planet. And just because I may not agree with the things that you agree with doesn't mean that I will spew hate towards you or try and rebel against you or start a whole war against you or try and cancel you in any way, shape or form. It's not my duty as a Catholic and not my duty as a person morally. This, there was this one thing I wanted to talk about on, it was, where is it, where is it, where is it? Okay, so this was from the Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh and I, I took an excerpt from um, the steps and the, the rules and just the information on puberty blockers for children and what their mandates and what they, um, what they uh, represent for that. And they said here, the medications is not permanent if injections are stopped. In about six months, puberty will restart at the development stage they were at when the hormones stopped. Now, I hear so many stories about how that's just so not true and the things that happen to these people after they detransition and the harmful effects of trying to bounce back into their natural state. You've seen it on gays against groomers, trans against groomers. You know, I, we are not blind to this type of stuff, but a lot of people aren't aware of this stuff. But that's my whole point is the government in the world is telling a false narrative of what being trans is and the effects of it and how easy it is to be and, and how you can just do this and do that. With no willy nilly. It's information that's being pushed that's wrong. But people like, you know, transgender people like you who understand it better, you see the full effects of, of, of the, the, the extremist version of what's going on right now. So like that that's. Is that something that's wrong that the Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh says? Okay, okay so let me make sure I got this right, because this might tie into something that you said earlier, the not wanted puberty, right? Yeah. So, because you're talking about uh, putting um, Lupron, which is a puberty blocker, into a child to pause the puberty, and then they're saying, we can unpause this puberty and th their life will be uninterrupted. They will go right back to the way they were, right? That's, that's yeah, the statement. It says, it says, I'll, re I'll read it again. The medication is not permanent. If injections are stopped in about six months, puberty will restart at the development stage they were at when the hormones stopped. Yeah, see, that, that's that's completely false. You were correct. You said you called it out. It is 100% false. So what's going on when we're pausing puberty? And I can't stress this enough, you guys. This is so important. The body, whether it's male or female, needs to reach puberty and, and I hate to use the word, transition through puberty. It needs to go through puberty at its scheduled time. That is so important. The fact that people just disregard the fact that you can pause puberty. The body continues to age, but the the hormones are, are restricting muscle growth, bone growth, and this that's sports related, and this is human related or ethical ethic related. Yeah. In the fact that it's literally stunting the growth of the heart, the lungs, the brain development, uh, your and again bone, ligaments, tendons, joints, everything is just kind of like going. What are we doing? The body continues to age, but you're not letting the hormones feed the body. Okay, and the body needs to be fed at 11, 12, 13, whenever these kids, because when I was growing up as a young person, we didn't have all the steroids and the drugs in our in our food supply. So girls didn't go through puberty till 14, 15, 16, when they got their period, right? And 
now girls are getting their period at 11, 12, they get impregnated at 13. Are you kidding me? Like, because we're putting the hormones in the food, but back to my original point, sorry no. to get off topic, but oh, keep going, yeah. the fact that they say that they're, still, they're lying to people that you can pause puberty, that's a complete lie. There's no such thing as pausing puberty. And no, oh, don't say the transition suicide rates. That's, uh, that one's frustrating. We'll get back to that one. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you are causing more harm. And, the, and the, the problem, the proof in this Lupron pausing puberty BS that's going to cause harm down the road, guess what? We don't know. There, there hasn't been any prepubescent uh, statistics. There's nobody in their 50s right now who's took Lupron as a child. Mm -hmm. So we don't know. And I'm telling you if, you, if you could fast forward through time and find a kid who was on Lupron for three years, pause puberty, then started it late, I guarantee at 50, 60, they're going to have heart problems. They're going to have uh, increased chance of heart disease, increased chance of cancer. And I know I'm not a doctor and people are going to call me out on this, but I'm telling you, I've been an athlete all my life and I know how the human body works and it needs puberty. It needs puberty at the time it needs puberty. It doesn't need to be paused and let the body age. And then all the organs are coming up behind the age of the body. So you have an underdeveloped body at an, at an adult age and you're just creating more customers for big pharma, right? Yeah. So Lupron or, or puberty blockers is, is a complete, uh, that's going to tear society down right there if that gets pushed through. This is a quote from the Canadian Institutes of Health Research and also the Center of Addiction and Mental Health about puberty blockers. Puberty blockers delay the start of puberty, including development of secondary sex characteristics. Surprisingly, even though puberty blockers are widely used to help transgender adolescents go through gender transition, their impact on brain function during this critical stage of brain development is largely unknown. That alone blows my mind, the fact that we are now allowing children before puberty even starts to get on these medications and they don't even know what it does to the brain. It's the exact same thing that they did with the vaccines and how they didn't know the long-term effects of these vaccines, but they forced people to get it. They forced you to wear the mask. They forced you to put the needle in your arm. You lost your job. You couldn't go back to school. You were, you were considered a crazy person, you know, like it, it, it's the same type of steps that are going, that they did with COVID. And it's the same thing that's happening right now. They don't know what any of this medication, but they do know the people up, they do know, and this is what they want. They just want a pool of people that are, are mentally ill and not really understanding themselves fully or giving themselves the opportunity to understand themselves later on in life. And it says over here as well, 60 to 90% of gender dysphoric children turn out to just be gay. This was from December 14th, 2023. Um, the Wall Street Journal posted this, but I, this was a repost from Christina Buns, who is a liberal and an atheist. So this isn't a Christian who posted this. This isn't a right wing who posted this. And this isn't a right wing newsletter that she got it from. This is the Wall Street Journal, you know, and like I said, 60 to 90 percent of gender dysphoric children turn out just to be gay. So if we're pushing this agenda onto children when 60 to 90 percent of them actually are just gay or lesbian, we're turning people into we're transitioning kids who aren't ready yet. And that's just going to cause generational trauma for years on end. Exactly. And yeah, the, the, I, the, the, the number's gone down to 60. Well, I never heard it from 60 to 90, but they, I was always told that between 80 and 90% kids, if they're allowed to just go through natural puberty, they grow out of this trans phase. Um, and I do 100% believe that there is a trans trend out there. Like this is trendy. Like this is, you know, and that's the, that's another one reason why I want to be a gatekeeper and uh, me, Blair White, uh, Sarah, uh, Brianna, Ivy, you know, the older trans, we're, we're gatekeeping because y'all are just going to destroy this next generation of kids and you're going to have a bunch of mindless, you know, unintelligent kids. Like, they've already, <laughs> this is the first time in history, you guys, that the generation coming up is now less intelligent than the one before it. Like, that's never happened in, in life. Like, in, in recorded history, there's never been a generation that came out dumber than the, the previous and it's happened and i think maybe some of that's covid because of the school closures or whatever but so oh, look, i think a lot of stuff like i'm an artist right so yeah. i see in my industry that's why i speak up so much because from my perspective like i see the things that go on in the music industry and the sinister it's completely demonic at this point and uh, the the norm for hip-hop music i mean for a long time has always been violent but now it's gotten to a point where it's just very evil in the sense of it's not even more violence it's complete worship to like evil, like complete submission to Satan. And I speak up on these things, not only because I'm Catholic, but even before I came back to my faith, I thought all of this stuff was ridiculous because regardless of if you believe in a religion or not, why are we advocating for children to be subscribing to things demon, demon related or Satan, things that aren't of positive morals, right? And <clears throat> when I see that aspect, and then I see what's going on in the schooling system when it comes to the perversion in the music industry, you know, how like these artists are quote for the children, but all they do is just promote explicit content. So going back to what I spoke about uh, when it came to 
uh, the schooling system and the LGBTQ rhetoric that's going on within state public schools, because that's the biggest issue, right? It's in the public schools. You know, the private schools aren't really subscribed to this type of rhetoric yet, but the public schools are filled with it. My mom is a school aide. She tells me about things. Well, I, I'll tell you about a story, actually. Um, my mother is a school aide at a public school, and the whole week before Memorial Day, the kids had no idea why they had off that upcoming Monday. Like, the school didn't make an announcement for it. You know, Memorial Day is a day, you know, you can have your opinions on the United States, but Memorial is the day where you commemorate the people who their intentions were to risk their lives to protect us, to give us freedom, right? So we commemorate those lives and those souls, Memorial Day, right? Mm -hmm. And the whole time, they didn't let the kids know why they had off, right? The kids had no idea why. They had off that Monday. They came back on Tuesday. They skipped the Pledge of Allegiance and had like a 25 to 30 minute. Sorry, they, sorry, it like paused for a yeah. second. They had, um, they had a 25 to 30 minute assembly on trans bullying and they skipped the Pledge of Allegiance. The day coming back after Memorial Day, you know, like I, I find stuff like that planned. Like that just doesn't happen. That's just not a coincidence. Like there are things in this world that you can look at that are clearly set up to push a certain agenda, you know, to, to skip the pledge of release and have a 30 minute debate about trans bullying right after Memorial Day and not mention to the kids at all why they had off or the importance of it. It's, it seems like they're attacking the children. But the reason why I got to that point is because of the books that have been banned. And like, there's a whole situation about, oh, like, why are they banning books in schools that are promoting LGBTQ? It's, it's transphobic, it's, it's homophobic, but the actual content within these books I can't even just like you've seen it. It's it's unbelievable yeah. that as a country we've been able to put these books out and illustrate it for kids pre-K through six of a woman with a strap on and a, and a child or a grown man sucking the appendage, <laughs> plastic appendage from the strap on in a children's book or men dressed up in ballet, ballet outfits. I had this debate with a couple of people, but for people who dance or no dancing, I did ballet. I did modern. Right. I, I did those things for periods of time. And I know that when men dress up in ballet outfits, they have leggings on under. They're not just exposed all their pubic hairs everywhere. But in this book, it's just a guy just looking at the ballet outfit, but his pubic hairs are sticking out from his private parts and his hairs and his little naked children running around. You know, I, I did my due diligence and I actually looked up his books and I went deeper because I can't look at anything from face value because that'll just make my point invalid. But yes, the books that are banned have all sexually explicit content. Carl Fish swore into office for the Fairfax County School Board swore on top of the books that were banned for sexual content. So that just goes to show you what message they're trying to put out in full force. Do you agree? What's your opinion on that? Yeah, 100%. Because the and the, this touches on what you said earlier with the not wanted is um, not wanted puberty. The kids are being taught that. There's no such thing as I don't want to go through puberty. A child doesn't know what puberty is and what puberty does to their body unless they're told, right? So why are we teaching children that they don't want to go through puberty. Oh, it's mind numbing. And to touch on the the, the sex books, I, I call them what they are. They're sex books. Literally, no child needs to be reading a sex book. And that's what they are with the, the one that you just described. I haven't seen that one in particular, but yeah, the smut that they're pushing in schools these days, it's literal porn. Like yeah. when I was in school, <laughs> that would have been considered hardcore triple X porn. Like, are you kidding me? And now we're letting 10 year olds look at this and say, oh yeah, this is what, you know, me and Jamie are going to do after school today. Like, are you kidding me? Yeah. So yeah. And for them not to tell the kids that, hey, you have the day off for celebrating uh, the life, the people who gave up their lives to support our country. Like that's disgusting too. Um, yeah. There should never be any like sex books in school and yeah, sex education, you know, junior high school, maybe, I don't know. Kids have sex so early these days, but yeah. we need to protect safe sex, but we can't be telling them that you know, gay sex is the right sex and, you know, whatever. It's, it, it's insane that this is, you know, for me, it's like, it's in the mind. I mean, that this is a, this is even a thing also, but I'm so passionate about this because I understand that the sex trafficking industry makes $150 billion a year. So why I say the government is exploiting the LGBTQ community and pushing grooming through the community is that, is that to eliminate the actual LGBTQ community and start normalizing pedophilia and man, male and boy relationships, or just young people and adult relationships. Look at Hollywood, look at the entertainment, the Epstein list is out. It's out. All of these people, these prominent figures that we held as idols and held as prominent figures are all these crazy psychopaths in an industry that makes billions of dollars a year, hundreds of billions of dollars a year. Um, I wish I was able to show the picture on my Instagram live, but I think because we are um, dual, it's a it's a dual live. Yeah. Um, I can't show the picture, but I have it. I actually got it from a video. I saw it from a video, but then I looked up the actual book and I saw it in there as well. Um, I I think I I untagged it, but it was talking about how Gays Against Groomers is an alt right Instagram account. Now I know that it's not an alt right Instagram account because there are people that aren't conservative, even though there's not as many, but there are a lot of um, 
um, non-conservatives or liberals that do speak up against this stuff. And I can completely understand why it's a small amount, because it's terrifying to go against these people. They, they, they call you names, they'll alienate you, they'll cancel you. So being a person that is from that side and speaking up against it still is very brave. So what do you what do you think about gays against groomers? Um, I've I've communicated with them a little bit. Um, I've offered my I don't know, I don't want to say services, but I've I've offered to you know speak on behalf of in legislature against Congress. Um, I've offered to go to you know protests or whatever, and um, nothing's ever come of it. Um, I guess I have to become a member or something. Like, I don't, I'm not sure, but yeah, I I 100 believe uh, in there, and, and I support them in, in the stuff they do. It's um, they're you know, like I said, I don't have a lot of things to say good or bad about them. Like, mm -hmm. I, I know what they're doing. They're protecting the kids. And I'm, a, I'm that that one tears me up a little bit because, like I said, I don't want kids on Lubron below 13. I don't want kids on cross-sex hormones below 10 or 12. Like, there will be trans kids out there. There, There is a, a lot of us that get looked over or missed. And how do we catch those kids? How do we catch the one, the, you know what we were? We were 0.1% of the population. Now we're increasing almost to one point percent of the population, and, and it's a trend. It's a social media trend. It's a trans trend. It's somebody commented earlier that trans is the new emo. <laughs> I kind of believe that, but it's uh, yeah. I don't. I don't know. I don't get how anybody could say that you're against trans rights when it's clear as day that the opinion, the point that we're trying to make is that there are people in this world that are trying to use the community as as a as a way to push not only pedophilia and grooming but also to alienate. The, the true meaning of being gay, lesbian, or trans. You know, it, it it's a shame that it, it, people can't grasp that from our opinion, because all we're trying to do is protect the community as much as we can. You know, I feel like I run into a lot of people who say that they're, you know, and they have opposite opinions of me, but I don't see any conscious effort of anything being done. Yeah, a protest here and there, but like no conversation. It's all yelling, yelling, yelling in front of Capitol buildings and yelling, yelling, yelling at people. But the reason why I, I do this is because I'm trying to break barriers. As someone who makes art and who is trying to go up in the music industry in an independent way, in a morally, in a, in a morally sound way, in a genuine way, things like this need to be normal conversations because the world isn't normal anymore, you know? So we need to have weird conversations in a weird world. And that's why I want to put myself in a position to talk about these things with you. And it, it does hurt me because I'm very passionate about these topics. I've always been as a kid and, you know, I, like it's just, it's just a lot. It's just a lot. And I see it all the time. And, I can't sit and be somebody that just watches all this happen. I've always been a person that's righteous and speaks up on these things. So for me, mentally, I can't stop talking about this. You know, like you can know my closest friends and my family. Like it, it gets a little crazy because I just, it, it consumes my mind just because of how passionate I am about it. Don't let it get too crazy with me, but still it, it sits on my mind. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a tough one. Like, like you said, society, I'm just worried that society is going downhill and you know, the LGBT, the new generation of LGBT, the, the Qs, let's just call it what it is. The QIA is the problem. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, I, I might garner a lot of hate from my own community because I said that, but it's all the, the QIA, the queer, maybe not the intersex, but the questioning and the asexual, like they're just trying to make problems for everybody. When I wanted to say this because you brought something up, like the, I, I think what's lost on society today is that the actual goal of a transgender person or transsexual like myself is to blend into society as peacefully and respectfully as possible. And the the QIAs take that as a sign of submission, like, oh, we're not worthy or, you know, we need to be treated like dirt and this and that. It, no, I, my goal all my life has been to walk into a movie theater and have not one person notice that I'm trans. Like that to me would be, that's a lifelong goal of mine. I know I will never achieve it because I'm not a passable trans person. I started too late, right? And and that bothers people when I say that that I know I don't I don't pass I know I won't pass I never will pass but I mean I suppose I could if I had one hundred and eighty thousand dollars worth of surgery I could probably pull it off but at my age it's too late mm. but again what's lost in the in the QIA is just we just want to fly under the radar literally I just want to go to work I want to go out to dinner with my boyfriend I want to go to a movie and have nobody go look at the size of that girl you know yeah, that dude yeah. or, <laughs> that there's a a war against the trans community right now in terms there of rights, is now, in terms I of rights like governmental rights is there anything that the government is doing right now to to stop the rights the human rights or the american rights whatever of trans people not trans adults that's that's the key word you gotta trans work adults. in there because the okay. government is trying to stop trans children yes 100 percent. and you know there's what 20 23 states that have banned trans inclusion in sports i don't know what the ban on child transitioning is mm -hmm. as far as the numbers of all 50 
Um, I want to say it's in the 18 range, 18 to 20 states probably banned transgender uh, affirming care for children, um, which is a step in the right direction. Yes, that's gatekeeping, but um, yeah, the, the the world is gonna hate the trans community even more if we keep pushing this narrative. And I have gay uncle. I have a gay uncle. I was the ring bearer to my gay uncle's wedding. My mm -hmm. oldest brother is gay. You know, I, my mom worked really close with this woman who I used to spend all my time with trans uh, a man who transitioned into a woman who owned an art shop, and I used to spend a lot of time there. And I don't like I don't have hate towards anybody, you know. And I feel like people are so quick to just assume that you hate somebody or a particular thing just because you're challenging this is what it is so a lot of people come up to me and they'll, they'll, as a response they'll tell me okay what about the catholic church and the pope and all the horrible things that go on within the church me as the catholic who reads the bible knows that these, these things happen in my in the history of catholicism people will take advantage of set religions or beliefs and exploit them and that's what causes the dispute in the first place. And that's why there's always going to be an argument because, oh, you're a Catholic, but this, 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 this happened. But in the Bible, it doesn't advocate for any of the things that the human beings did with the religion. That's why you put your faith in not whoever is trying to um, trying to act like a godlike figure on earth. You know what I mean? These people are never going to be godlike because they aren't. They are humans. So I understand that there is problems within the Catholic Church, and I speak about those problems that are in the Catholic Church. You know, I don't like Pope Francis. I think that he's evil, and I think in the Bible, biblically, there are evil popes. So I think that this one that is in control of the Catholic Church right now is corrupt and is evil. And the Catholic Church is very corrupt and very evil. I believe that when the Roman Empire fell, they became the Catholic Church because then the Vatican showed up and then all of, you know, and, and the hierarchy within the Europe, in Europe just became this huge thing. And there's all the money that the Roman emperors had is in the Catholic Church, is buried under the Vatican. So I'm fully aware of problems within my own community and I speak up on those things. I feel like people in the LGBTQIA community are so emotional about the way that they feel about it that they're not open to understanding, wait, there are holes in our system that we should talk about that would make the world a better place. Like, they're not open to understanding, wait, there are things that are within my community that are wrong, that are being pushed, and I, as for someone who stands for the community, should talk about against these things, but also a lot of people don't like being considered wrong. That's a lot of thing, a lot of ego is with it. Like, they don't like being, like, their their ideologies or whatever they believe to be proven is wrong, and it's, it's an image thing. And it's, and, Sometimes I don't blame people because, like, you grow up just your whole life thinking a certain way, and then boom, you just hit out of nowhere. Like all these posts and all these people say, "No, you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong." It's it's uh, threatening, you know, to your identity as a person. So I get why there's this connection, but there needs to be an understanding that when we have these conversations, this is the time where you breathe, you focus on yourself, and you're like, "Listen, I need to understand what this person's saying, and I need to be fully open to what they're saying." And that's where this is a huge disconnect right now. So every sect, every creed, everything. There's always bad things going on in every in every sect. But we can't just defend ours and say that, oh, we're perfect. When we know we're not perfect, nobody's perfect. Yeah, I I agree. And I people throw that at me a lot because they think, well, I'm on the conservative side. I have a lot of conservative beliefs, but I'm also I have liberal beliefs. Like I believe that abortion should be legal. And I know that's not popular with the the Christian and you know the the conservative community. So I'm not hundred percent conservative. I'm just more on the right, I guess. And you know, when I bring up, you know, hey, we shouldn't be, you know, putting these kids through this. And they're like, well, the Christian church isn't no safer for them. You know, I'm like, well, yeah, it's I don't. Like, it's like, I can guarantee you there are a lot of Christian churches that are safer. Like my Catholic, my, my parish, St. Mark Parish is an amazing parish. Father Fong, who used to be the pastor, Father Fred now is the pastor. It's all love, welcoming everybody. We have, we have um, a lesbian couple. We have gay couples that come to church and we greet them with open arms because it's like, it's not. Like the true meaning of who we are isn't what you think it is, or like not you specifically, obviously, but what people think it is. So don't use that as a way to counteract to what I'm saying about what's going on with you. You can ask me about what's going on in my beliefs, and I'll tell you that I'm making conscious efforts to talk about them and expose them to change them. But don't gatekeep in the aspect of think that you're perfect or whatever you believe in is perfect. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I probably am guilty of that too with, you know, my beliefs. Well, I don't care if I'm guilty of that. When it comes to protecting women's sports, there is no, there's, no like give in my opinion there is there's no exception there, <laughs> women deserve their own category they deserve their own sports they deserve their own spaces they deserve their own bathrooms they deserve their own prison cells they do not need to be grouped in with some guy who thinks he's a woman like mm -hmm. yes i point to myself like i don't think i'm a woman i know i'm a dude but i wish i was a woman hell yeah i do i wish i was biological female that'd be so cool like how how great would that be but anyway yeah that's there. So Leah Thomas thing. I, I was, it, 
was it the Leah Thomas thing? Were you talking about this before the Leah Thomas thing? Or was this something that, you know, because it, it made huge headlines and it kind of woke a lot of people up about what was going on. Did that inspire you to kind of push more on the yeah. topic itself? Leah Thomas is the one. I mean, I can thank that person 100% for getting me involved in this. Like, I wish I didn't have to because there are other things I would have been spending my money on instead of flying around the country. Like, um, I was one of the first people, I definitely was the first trans person to reach out to Riley Gaines when the Leah Thomas issue broke broke news. I was, I, me and Riley are, are like great friends now. I can text her any time of the day, you know, say hi, this, not. But yeah, Leah Thomas is to blame and she's, uh, Le Leah Thomas has ruined Riley's life, ruined a lot of people's lives that are now in this battle to protect women's sports and, and not just like said sports and but like if you want to get tell me if this is the correct story about the whole leah thomas and what, what was the what was this swimmer's name i'm sorry the, the female swimmer's name uh riley Gaines. riley Gaines. riley Gaines. so riley and leah thomas were in the finals right and it was they tied they had the same exact time but mm -hmm. they both won first place but they said that she couldn't take the trophy because they wanted it to be a photo opportunity for leah yeah. thomas yes yeah, because they wanted to push the DEI. It's a college, again, liberal college funded by government. So they're telling everybody, you got to look right, you got to look good, and you got to be inclusive. So Leah should, should hold this trophy. And, you know, it's that. And then, you know, I'm friends with, with April and uh, Pam and all uh, other teammates of Leah Thomas. That, that Then later the issue came up of the locker room changing, you know? They're like, this dude walks in, starts getting undressed in front of all these girls. And we were like, I thought this was a women's locker room. <laughs> So that, that upset me almost just as much as the, the, the trophy thing, but just, I get tired of the argument and, you know, it's, it's a fight I wish I didn't have to dedicate so much time to, um, to be honest with you, I'm tired of arguing the science, the numbers, the, the lung capacity, the muscles, the, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so so over it. yeah, I'm so over that. Now I just default to just be a good person, let, leave women alone, like, why just just be do the right thing is it that hard to just do the right thing and just be a trans person without encroaching on everyone else's life you know like is it that hard to do but uh, apparently it is because oh my gosh if we don't affirm these people and include them in the women's division they're they're they're, they're excluded from life which yeah. i would want somebody to be like like i thought like somebody commented like you, you were a trans a person who was against trans rights and i and i read that and i was like as much as I know that would probably offend you if you were a little bit more emotional and soft, but like if you were to say that for someone on the left, they would have a full blown meltdown. Like how could, how dare you offend somebody and tell somebody that they are against rights for themselves? Like this, the fact that we're having this conversation right now is insane. I already said this to you, but like the fact that that's another point that I have to make is also very alarming because in the same breath that you want inclusion, you're also insinuating that there are people out there that want to enslave themselves. Yeah. It, it, it's very, it's, very, it's very confusing to me. I, I just want to appreciate, I appreciate it so much that you took your time to be on the platform with me on Instagram and go live with me. I was very nervous doing this um, just because not necessarily about what people would have thought, but I wanted to be ready and prepared to, you know, talk about these topics because I don't want to miss a beat. I don't want to misinform people. I don't want to talk out of, you know, I don't want to talk out of just thin air. So no. this went very, very smooth. We've been talking for almost a little bit under an hour. I know Instagram like automatically shuts the live off at oh. a certain point. So okay. I don't want to like abruptly end in the middle of a point that we have, but I'm going to constantly be posting stuff about, you know, in regards to this yeah. stuff, because like I said, I'm passionate about it. I'll definitely love to keep in contact with you in the future. If anything pops up, like we could definitely talk about, you know, the topic at hand. If anyone wants to talk about trans rights who actually support trans people, my DMs are open. See like that, that's like offensive because I know that you're not a trans person. So how could you say that the person who is speaking in live right now isn't speaking up for trans people? That's, that's very offensive. And my, see, like, I don't know if you would take offense to that, but that that's just from my logic of just a human being that's how i would take that if i was a trans person yeah i want to say hi i think uh you're welcome mama france like I, i'm sorry if i'm facing the pronouncing the name wrong but yeah um yeah the the guy with the dms is motion is that the guy's name but, yeah, this is uh sasha they them okay yeah so um <laughs> they them i just called him the guy whoops bad my bad um yeah it's i don't yeah i don't like having this uh, this this argument and i wanted to say before it cuts us off like You've done amazing. Like, don't. I love the fact that you wrote things down. Like, I wrote some things down too. Um, but awesome. Like, great, great, great job. Like, you brought facts instead of, like you said, pulling things out of thin air or whatnot. Like, there's more research than I do. I mean, I have a grease board in front of my camera because I have my YouTube channel and stuff like that. So I talk about, you know, bullet points and stuff like that. But you were well prepared. It was awesome. Like, it was great. I really appreciate the opportunity to.
I appreciate the opportunity to use your platform to reach other people. Um, unfortunately, it looks like I maybe only got to one person who doesn't agree with me. Everybody seems to be uh, on the message board. Everybody seems to be in agreement with us, you know, which is, yes, that's an echo chamber a little bit. But, you know, if, if we can spread the word and, you know, I hate to sound like gospel religious, but we need to spread the word to get the word out that, you know, it's OK to be trans and it's OK to be misgendered or it's OK to not pass. And it's it's OK to let your body go through puberty and transition late in life. I mean, I, I bring her up all the time, but Blair White is a trans who didn't transition since she was 19. And if you take the right steps and you do the right things, like you can still be passable at, at my age if you start at 19. You don't have to block puberty and to be passable. Um, to get to where she is, it, it can be done, you know? So uh, I just, there's so much false narratives being pushed, like you said, with the government and big pharma and everybody. It's, it's the biggest, it's the most evil institution in the history of the united states and since it's so technologically advanced i could say it's the it's the biggest robbery of human rights ever in human history you know like it, it's, it's insane like from an artist standpoint this is a crazy thing artists well big pharma owns a huge percentages of record labels and so what happens is they give the labels extra money they're like hey listen if you talk about x y and z drugs if your artists talk about this about many drugs this many times over a span of this many months or years or days we're going to give you a bonus, right? So they essentially just, they give money to themselves just to give to the artists that are signed to the label. And so that's why when you hear a lot of these artists talk about their music now, they tell you, I don't do drugs really anymore. I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't really party. But all of their music is degeneracy. All of their music is low vibration. Why? Because they're paid by Big Pharma to talk about drugs, to push the agenda of drug use towards young people. And what is that What is that going to ultimately do for the, for the mind state of people? They're not going to be able to make rational decisions when you have six-year-olds, seven-year-olds, 12-year-olds addicted to codeine because Future's talking about it but doesn't even touch it anymore. It's, yeah. it's, the, same, it's the same premise that, that goes on with the LGBTQIA community as well. But it's also in many other things too. Like, I feel like the Israeli-Palestine thing also, even though it's completely off topic, but they use that as, you know, to, to, we're, we've, we've fought more against each other than for, for each other in this whole entire thing. Like, we fight against each other more than with each other every time something like this happens. But it's like every other instance in life. So we got we to come together and really understand each other i'm not for the, the the abolishment of trans rights and the abolishment of of gay rights i'm here to protect the children so if they do feel that way they'll be able to make a healthier and more understanding um decision yeah, when they're older yeah nine, nine to 19 yes it seems like a lot it's 10 years is a long time but for a human being it's not that much time to understand yourself. I'm 22 years old and I'm still trying to understand myself. I just turned back to Catholicism and I'm, my whole life is swept upside down because of all the things that I was doing and what I indulged in, you know what I mean? Like, so I'm having not an identity crisis, but also a personality change as well. And 22, I'm 22 and I still have hopefully many more years left. So that's our point. I just wanted to conclude my point on that. So it's, I'm for trans rights, I'm for gay rights. Just don't like the exploitation of children and what I think is grooming. Yeah, exactly. No, well said, perfect, you know? Yeah, that's, um, I lost track of where, where we, I was going to go with something on that you just said, but um, Sorry, yeah, I, no, no, it's totally fine. I just, I need, uh, or, or we need to just, like you said, come together and, the, oh yeah, the trans rights thing. I get so tired of people saying trans rights are human rights. Well, the, the easy answer to that or the, the rebuttal to that one is, uh, tell me what right I don't have that uh, you have. Like, I can go, you know, to dinner, I can vote, I can drive a car, I can get I can purchase a gun. I can do whatever I want. I'm trans and I have every right that every other human being has in America. Like there's other countries. That's that's their problem, not mine. I live in the United States, so I have rights. Take, taking away child transitioning is not a human right. Like that, that's not taking away someone's right. You're taking it's, away that's, something that was already implemented. Yeah. I, it's not like you're taking away something that's human. It's something that was implemented by humans. It's not a part of us it's, at birth. Yeah, it's like the gun license or a driver's license it's a privilege given to us by the people that we elected to be our governors uh the governors of, of our life you know that's a privilege you know we are privileged to be able to do these things and um i don't i don't know yeah that's the big argument is it a god-given right to turn to be able to transition yeah, absolutely I, I i hope everybody understood you know hopefully everybody was hearing what you know the conversation there wasn't any interruptions or like bugs but i do want to thank everybody for listening so the whole premise of this was just to get people to really hear the arguments and what's going on because there are a lot of people that aren't even aware of the things that are going on to begin with and then when things start happening in their life once they realize it it's already going to be too late 
But there are a lot of people like me and you that are ahead of the curve, that see the transition, that want to warn the people about what is coming or what could come. And that's why I want conversations like this. I feel like as a rapper, a lot of people who listen to the type of music I listen to or like the type of audience I'm around, they're, they don't, they're not aware of it because they don't care about it. But they don't know that they have to care about it because they forget. One thing about artists and one thing about entertainment is like we forget that we live in the real world sometimes. <laughs> Like we're very, like the artists really like, I'm focused on my brand doing this because it's a lot of work being an artist. Like you devote so much time into creating your own thing. Like you don't really focus on all the outside noise because it's only going to distract you. But that's when we have to come back to reality and realize, wait a minute, like I could be this artist, but I should talk about real life at some, in certain aspects. You know what I mean? I can't just be this image and just completely disregard all the things that are happening around me that I know I'm going to gain um, a fan base and I'm going to be an inspiration for people. I have to stand on morals. I can't just be this idol because then I'm going against my religion. Like, why are people, I get it, you're idolizing my music, but there's way more to life than someone's music. Like, I want to listen to someone's music who also has good morals, who also lives a good life, or I'm manifesting negative energy through someone who is not of good morals. Exactly. So, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I, I want to thank everybody for being in here. Oh, sorry? No, I said, yeah, I agree 100%. I, I do want to thank everybody for tuning in. It's awesome um, to get to voice my opinion. And, um, like if you, uh, do you care if I tell people about my YouTube channel? Oh, go, go. Okay, so as much as you want. If you, if you want to hear more of my content, I do have my own YouTube channel where I uh, do, do videos like every every week or twice a week that will talk about the current topics of the transgender issues that we face with, like recently was the USA Boxing just changed their rules. I did a long uh, 38 minute, minute video on that. Um, the cycling videos. I do a lot of videos. It's Jessica Gill, Las Vegas on YouTube. It's pretty easy to find. If you want to, you know, converse with me on IG, I'm here, uh, jessicagill.27. And as the the direct mission guys or person direct said, direct that, uh, in motion, yeah. Yeah. Just, you know, hit me up, DM me, whatever. Let's talk, you know. I'll, I'll talk to anybody. Awesome. And that's exactly the point. We're open to talk to anybody, specifically you in this conversation. You're open to talk to people about this. I see the opposite side not want to have the conversation and result in cursing or, or antagonizing. It's just instant. So the conversation never gets anywhere because it's just pure anger right off the gate. But yeah, the conversation is yeah. open for Jessica at all times. Yep, always here. So. Awesome. Have a great one, guys. I appreciate it again, Jessica. We're going to have more conversations like this. I'm going to have other people on these lives as well to talk about other topics. Uh, keep in tune. Like I said, I'm not going to be the type of artist that's going to sit and watch the world burn just because I want to have some type of image. So let's get it going. Let's push the narrative. Let's the bright narrative, not, not, not the bad narrative, but let's try and get everybody understanding each other. That's really basis of this whole conversation. So I'll see you guys. Have a great right. Okay, you guys. So as you see, that was a great conversation. I apologize. It did go almost an hour long, but we, we hit on some pretty good topics and I think the most important one for me, obviously, as you all know, is the sports. We need to let women have their own sports. And you know what? Now I, I even feel like a butthead saying it that way. Like women need get their own sports. They don't need, you know, we don't need to give them back. Like they had their own sports. They deserve their own sports. They get their own sports. But anyway, enough of my rant. I'm so sorry. I hope you guys enjoyed that conversation. Appreciate you guys tuning in. I know it was a long video. I'm sorry. But it was really good to get that <clears throat> that message out. And to speak with someone on another platform that, uh, like I said, he's a Christian hip hop artist and you should check him out. It's 47 slouch on Instagram. He's a follower of mine. I'm a follower of his. You can link off of my profile into his. I'm sure it'd be cool. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Have a good weekend. Thanks.